Vandiyathevan took the straw and looked at Vanathi, Princess. Do you remember me? I thought you had completely forgotten. He said. Sir. How can I forget you? How can you forget the favors you have done for me and my husband? Vanatha said. That's why you're having your wedding while I'm gone. He said. Vanati smiled mischievously, yes, if they had been there, wouldn't the wedding have gone off like Bonnie's Selvar Makuta Bishakam? Who saw what intrigues they might have been up to? She said. I prevented the coronation of Nanapani's son-in-law from taking place? Wasn't it because of the vow they had taken in competition with the flower girl that they would not mount a lion? The boatman's luck struck. What is the use of falling short on me? Vandiyathevan said. Let her enjoy that fortune. I have no fault with her for that. There is no fault with them, only happiness. But be a good astrologer and let them name the date only when the date is fixed for their marriage. She said. If you ask the child soothsayer to keep the day, it will work. They all trust in him. Vandiyathevan said looking at Vanati. Vanati smiled Kalir and turned to the younger bratty, sister. I remember something when he told me about the child soothsayer. After saying that, she again smiled cheerfully. What are you laughing at, Vanati? The child that will be born in your womb is going to rule the three worlds, said the astrologer, are you laughing at that? Said Kundave. Why do you call it divination? Goddess. That divination is going to work. Vandiyathevan said. Vanatha stifled a laugh at her unrecognizable embarrassment. Then, sister. If I tell you something, will you turn the other way? I asked the infant astrologer, where is a suitable husband for the young brat going to come from, said Josier. The next minute he jumped in fighting with the disciple of the soothsayer. I laughed at that incident she said. Kuntava suppressed a burst of laughter and said with feigned anger, enough of your games. Let him read the leaf that has come in haste. She said. The two ladies noticed the worried look on Vandiyadevan's face as he read the paper. What Sethi? What has Kantamaran written? Ilya Prati asked with interest. Read it for yourselves. Then Vandiyathevan gave the leaf to Kundave. The leaf was written as follows. To my dear friend, Valavera and Vandiyathevan, forgive the crimes and injustices I have committed against you, and leave immediately to see my sister Manamekali for the last time, young Sambuvarian Kanamaran. Kundave read it and said, it's good news in a way. Looks like she's caught Manamegal. She said. What was it? Where did Manamegali go? Vandiyathevan asked in surprise. Don't they know anything about Manamegali? I don't know. I meant to ask them. I wanted to say so, but I hesitated how to take her speech to one who had not inquired about her with such a stony chest. Goddess! How can I be stone-hearted when it comes to Manamegali? I'm dead when it comes to her. No, you're not dead to her, you're a blessed immortal. Go on. Now tell me about the hourglass. We thought that Vera Narayana might have killed herself by falling into the lake. It was reported that people were searching in all four directions. It seems that they have found out the whereabouts of Manamegal from Kanamaran's leaf. What's the point of me going to see her? She's not going to know me. Vandiyathevan said. Even so, they must go. Kanamaran has written for the last time. I don't know what it means, Kuntave said. Sister. He is so merciless. He is so unworthy of Manamegali's love. Everyone sacrifices a great empire for love. He even hesitates to make a journey. Vanatha said with a sigh. Vandiyathevan said, Princess. There are few kingdoms in the world. Therefore, only a few people can sacrifice a kingdom for love. But first of all, what you said is true. I am not at all worthy of Manamekali's love. She left me the love that should be given to a goddess. I am not a god, but an ordinary human with faults. Manamekali's love must be dedicated to God. He said. 
However, there is nothing wrong with going and seeing her once and leaving. Kanamaran also wrote for the last time. Said the youngest brat. Didn't I say that I will not go? I doubt if there is any point in going. I hesitate because I am a dead person to her. However, the meaning of what Kantamaran has written for the last time is not well understood. Then is he going to impose restrictions on not seeing her? Or is he going to take her to the Buddhist virgin temple and join her? If you travel for a day you will know everything. Said the youngest brat. Vandiyathevan travelled from Palayare to Viranarayanapuram in just one day. But unlike the previous times, this time that day passed like an era. So many memories and experiences were piling up in his heart. At first, when he went to Tanjore through this route, he saw many pleasant sights. He built so many sky forts. Not all of them have become sky fortresses. Many impossible things have happened. The noble prince of the Chola country, the heroic prince who was celebrated in all Tamil Nadu, and the imperial crown that came into his hands was put on his head by another, and therefore he got Selvara of Pani, who is higher than Mount Meru and becomes a sacrificial peak, as his life friend. He found a place in the heart of the young man who adored and worshipped the Selvar of such a lady. May Dandanayak of the Chola army in the country of Ela attained the position. Can you say that this is due to his skill? Not a day. When he accidentally went to the Kadampur mansion that night and learned about the conspiracy held by the petty kings there, he became the cause of all the events that followed. A lot has happened in these eight months. Some of them are important. Dumakatu, who appeared in the sky, realized his perverse act and disappeared. Aditha Kari Kalar has disappeared. Could there be a connection between the comet and Aditha Kari Kalar? Is it false that millions of people have such a belief? What can be the relationship between the planets and stars that move in the sky and the human life that appears today and disappears tomorrow on this earth? However, there is no doubt that some supernatural force beyond the reach of human beings, some alternate canon, guides human life. Otherwise, how could he have recovered from so many pitfalls in the last eight months? How many? How many have helped him to escape from their respective clutches? Who brought them all together to help him at the appropriate time? Do elders praise and worship that miraculous power as God? Shiva, Thirumal, Mahashakti are chanted and spread by name? Who brought them all together to help him at the appropriate time? Do elders praise and worship that miraculous power as God? Shiva, Thirumal, Mahashakti are chanted and spread by name? Who brought them all together to help him at the appropriate time? Do elders praise and worship that miraculous power as God? Shiva, Thirumal, Mahashakti are chanted and spread by name? Vandiyathevan was amazed when he thought of the unexpected help he received in the most critical situations. My heart melted when I thought of those who helped me. No matter how much harm Kanamaran did to him later, he could never forget the help he did in the first place. All Workadian helped him as much as possible. Nandini, the goddess of Mahini, also helped him. He marveled at the kindness the younger brat still had for him. The help rendered by the Odakara girl Pungujali cannot be forgotten in all seven births. She deserves to be seated in the throne of the Chola Empire. What about the help given by Uttama Chola, whom he first knew as Sendan Amudana? Is there a counterpart? Did he pay his debt of gratitude by saving him from the doctor's son's spear? Not a day. As long as there is life in his body, he can pay off his debt to the Chola clan only by giving charity to that clan. Then the officer is a great scoundrel. There was a time when he thought that it would be a great blessing for him to see the great warrior who had borne sixty-four war wounds in his Nidaya Thirumani. Apart from seeing him, he was subject to his unnecessary anger and malice. At last, he made amends for that. Admitting that the knife he had thrown had missed the mark and had killed Aditha Kari Kalar. He saved him from perverse blame and cruel punishment. Isn't he Mahan? In what way can he now thank him? Let them all be. That demonic girl Manamega lie. Why should she have such divine love for him? Why be so mad? 
why should he come forward to accept the crime of murder to save him? Everything is the result of that idiot Kanamaran. At first, Kanamaran had praised Manamekali about him as Indra, Chandra, Arkuna, and Cupid. It seems that the evil woman has snatched away her soul. Vandiyathevan did not know all that. You forget my sister. We're going to give her away in the big place. When Kanthamaran said that, Vandiyathevan really tried to forget her. Meeting Iliaprati helped with that. But Manamegali did not change his mind, don't even try to change it. And she doesn't hesitate to bear her heart for many to know. Aha! What a lovely lady! How modest, sitting! How pure is her mind! A soul like a green child! Truly she is a child! Mind like milk, lots of mischief in it! It's a good thing she thinks she's dead! She will never stop being paranoid. After some time the mind will clear. She will marry another heroic youth and lead a happy life. Will this really happen? Or am I deluding myself? Am I responsible for putting Manamegali in this condition? What is the meaning of Kanamaran writing come to see for the last time? Maybe, maybe aha! How painful that thought! According to the speed of Vandiyadeva's thoughts, the Puravi on which he was riding also went fast. Fortunately, there was no major flood in the Kalhida River. A boat is not required. There was no need to change horses. Dismounting his horse in a small stream that was going along the shore, he crossed the vast white sand dunes and reached the shore. From a distance he saw the grim scene of the Kadampur mansion burnt to the ground with some charred pillars and walls standing there. Kandamara's men were waiting for him near Viranarayanapuram. Where is the little master? When asked, they are waiting by the lake with a boat. Came the reply. Vandiyathevan approached Viranarayana lake wondering why he should wait on the lake shore. The long bank of the lake covered the water beyond like a great fortress wall. The first time he came to that lake, he remembered that people had gathered there for the 18th Puruka festival, and men, women, and children were rejoicing, dancing, playing and feasting. Now there are not so many people on the shore of the lake. They were seen here and there. At that time, water was gushing from all the springs in the lake. Thus the sound of flowing water was heard as loud as the noise of the market. At this time, water was flowing from only a few passes with a gentle gurgling sound. Vandiyadeva mounted his horse gracefully on the steep bank of the lake and reached the top. From there the scene before his eyes was also changing. The water is not raging like it is trying to break the bank of the lake when it is full. The water spread started from the bottom of the bank. The reddish color of the water changed completely and became clear like marble. Along the banks, lilies, Red water lilies, lotuses, and blue lotuses were growing thickly in such a variety that they were young leaves, mature leaves, young buds, half-expanded buds, and full-blown flowers. At some places the water itself was covered with them. On the southern side of the lake, the current from the north comes in eddies and eddies and does not mix with the lake water. There were no boats floating down the river like white-winged swans. The lakeside areas where the flood of the river was flowing were now covered with trees and plants and reeds. Between them white cranes and storks were standing on one leg doing penance. It did not take Vandiyathevan more than a few seconds to notice all this. By then, a boat standing on the shore of the lake came into view. He also came to know that one of the people in the boat was Kanamaran. He immediately rushed his horse towards that place. He jumped off his horse and approached the boat. Gondhamaran stretched out one hand and took hold of Vandiyadeva's hand and took him into the boat. He signaled to the boatman to release the boat and looked sadly at Vandiyathevan with tear-filled eyes. Friend! You have come so early! Congratulations! If you had come tomorrow instead of today, perhaps you would not have seen Manamekali alive! He said. It is true that Vandiyathevan is a stone-chested man. If he was not so determined in his heart, could he have done all these things carelessly in the last eight months? Is it possible to walk in many critical situations with a high regard for life without giving the slightest thought to the dangers to oneself or others? 
Such a confident person was disturbed hearing the words of Kanamaran. The meaning of Kanamaran's writing to see for the last time is now beyond doubt. Tears welled up in his eyes and ran down his cheeks. Kandamara! Is Manamegali's life in danger? How is that? Her will is wrong? It's about you and me. Asked Vandiyathevan with a wavering voice. Friend! Now Manamegali's will is clear. But I don't know how long she will be alive. I pray to all the gods that she will be alive until I see you. Said Kanamaran. He then narrated the following events as he knew them. At Kanchi, Kanamaran was building a golden palace for the arrival of the emperor. Then he heard that Sambuvarayar had taken Manamekala and left. Subsequently, we got the news that Manamegala had gone missing on the shores of Viranarayana Lake. He immediately bid farewell to Parthipendra and ran to find out the fate of his younger sister. His father was almost maniacal with the abundance of grief. She slept in the tent at night. No other information was available from him other than missing at dawn. He said that he had left the old man. He said that he had searched and searched in the ruined Kadampur mansion and its surroundings. Kanamaran himself started searching. I don't think she would have gone back to the old town. He thought that he might have fallen into the lake and found her body. There was also the wish that she might be alive and wandering around the woods surrounding the lake. He wandered around the lake shore. He searched for a short distance along the passes from the lake. He left the boat in the lake and searched along the shore. He also searched in the woods surrounding the lake. After about four days of such a fruitless search, Gondhamaran remembered the Niraji Mandapam situated on one of the upper islands of the lake. Karikalan and Vandiyathevan, who had gone hunting, Nandini and Manamekala, who had gone to play in the water, had met and had fun one day in the Niraji Mandapam. It is impossible for Manamegalai to reach that place alone without the help of a boat. Bear, could she have gone there on her own through the western forest, which is full of wild animals like leopards? Even after passing through the forest, many small canals had to be crossed on the way. However, thinking that he can see that too, Ken Thamaran boarded the boat and reached the Niraji Mandapam. As he approached the hall, many old memories appeared in his mind. At first the hall was seen as witchcraft. No one seemed to be there. He stood on the steps of the hall and sighed as he thought that all the mental forts he had built had gone in vain. He was startled by another sigh that echoed his own. He ran away and looked. Manamegala was lying on the stairs on the other side of Niraji Mandapam. She was lying dry and withered. Her sari was torn in many places. Scratches were seen in several places on her mane. At first the body did not seem alive. It appeared to be the body of a woman who had been starving for many days and wandered in the forest without knowing where to go and finally fell down exhausted. Seeing that scene, Kandamara felt pain like a thousand waves flowing in his heart. He took the bell and put it on his lap and moaned. Remembering the sound of sighing made me wish that maybe there was still life. He brought good water and sprinkled it on his face. He poured it into his mouth. He rubbed his whole body to get warm. After a while she opened her eyes and looked at him. Brother! Is it you? What I thought came true. I thought that if I went to heaven I would see you and him. Where is he? She asked in a very soft voice. Kanamaran struggled to hold back the raging cries, He will come, mother, he will come. He said. She thinks that she is in heaven with Manamegali and also sees Kanthamaran in heaven. Kanamaran came to know everything that she was inquiring about Vandiyadeva. He managed to answer her confidence so as not to shock her. After this, young Sambuvere and Kanthamaran told about his efforts to revive Monimi Kala's body and how he hastily wrote a letter and sent it to Vandiyathevan. Finally. My friend. I cannot thank you enough for respecting my ally. Manamegala would not have lived much longer. If we fanned the flame in the dam, wouldn't it burn for a little while? That's how her flame of life shines. Mainly, it is the desire to see you that keeps her alive. She believes that everyone is in heaven. Instead, 
don't say anything. It's natural for you to feel sad when you see her. You should control that too and speak with a smile on your face. He prayed that. The boat has approached Niraji Mandapam. Yazasai and Patisai were heard in a soft voice. Vandiyadeva looked at Kandamaran. Yes, my friend. She is singing Manamegali along with Yazasai. He said. They got off the boat. Vandiyathevan carefully listened to what song Manamegala was singing. It was the same song that she had sung with adoration in the same Niraji Mandapam once before. Vandiyadevan was waiting on the stairs till the end of the song. As soon as he finished he climbed the steps and reached the hall. When Manamegali saw him, she rolled down and tried to get up. She was unable to stand on her feet due to weakness in her body and was seen tottering and falling. Vandiyathevan rushed forward and held her from falling to the ground. He slowly made her sit and sat down. He took Manamekali in his lap. Manamekala often looked up at his face. He seemed to confirm several times whether it was Vandiyadev and whether she was lying on his lap. My brother did not deceive me. Heaven is not just a dream. This miracle is not a lie. Her petals murmured softly. No lie, Hunamun, no lie, this is surely heaven. It is true that I have come. Vandiyathevan said. Tears welled up in his eyes as he couldn't help it. His tears rolled down like pearls on the face of Manamekali. Unbeknownst to him, there was a whistling sound. Manamekali's face glowed for a while with divine sophistry. From her long eyes gleamed silver moonbeams. Her petals spread like pomegranate buds and showered some sweet words. Vandiyathevan listened carefully. But he just couldn't make out what she said. Why do you need to know? What if those words were what she said? What is the use of mere words when the golden casket of the heart is opened and the elixir of love flows forth? After a while, the petals of the Manamekali piled up. Eyes closed. The divine couch that crawled on the face collapsed. Peace prevailed. A light rain fell on the tree branch overhanging the fountain hall. Some of the red blossoms that were shaken from the tree branch fell off. Manamegali's life also fell from her body. Where did the soul go after leaving the body? How did it go? Mixed with depression? Gone to the sweet sound of the ripples in the spring? Did it fly in the sky, united with the Madurajita of the birds singing to the tune of heartache? Where did it go? Did it go to the seed of the universe that creates and destroys all the plants and all the living beings? Or did it get mixed up in the heart of Vandiyadeva who was sitting in memory like a tear-filled stone? No one knows. Even if you know, you can't tell. Only one thing is certain. We will no longer see Vandiyathevan, who was full of fun and games, mischievous and frolicsome, bold, impetuous and daring. Kind heart, compassion and wisdom reached Vandiyathevan at that moment. The goddess Manikali resided in his heart temple. Wherever he goes, Vallavara and Vandiyathevan is able to do many good works. He will be admired by all who know him. Hero. We bid you farewell for now. We don't want to interrupt your sad thoughts. Dear friend of Aromas Hivarman. Long live you. May your name continue forever in the legacy of heroic Tamils.